Hi friends, today I'm going to show you how to create some simple and beautiful ink and watercolor Christmas cards. These are perfect for beginners. You don't need a lot of supplies, just some basic watercolor paints, a few brushes, and a waterproof pen. I'm using the Micron pen right here, and I've linked all of the exact supplies that I'm using in this video in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with what I'm doing here. I've sped this up a little bit just to go through the process so that you can see each of the designs. And if you want to go back and play it in slow motion, you'll be able to do that as well. If you want to really get into any of these designs in particular, we're going to be going over 12 designs total. And I've included chapters in this video so that you can easily navigate back and forth between ones that you might want to try. We'll start off with a classic holly berry. And as you can see from this, you don't need to be super precise with your painting. This is meant to look handmade and doesn't need to be perfect. This is more about the thought and the love that you're putting into each of these designs. For this one, we'll do a wreath, and I'm going to work my way around the circle and put in some leaves and then some holly berries as well. This will look like it was gathered from flora and fauna that you found outside and used to put together in a wreath. So it's really casual and lighthearted. When you go through and you're using the watercolor paints, do you go a little bit darker than you think that you need to? And they'll dry lighter as the process goes on. And this way you'll end up with really beautiful greens. As you're painting your greens, you might want to mix up a few different shades. You can see here that I'm working from a pretty limited palette. You don't need a ton of colors to make something like this happen. And I'm mixing up both a warm green and a cool green. You'll see that throughout the entire video. Next, we'll go on to some mistletoe and draw a sweet little bow at the top here. And then just little leaves coming down into more of an overall teardrop shape. So a lot of tiny teardrops making up a larger teardrop shape for this bundle of mistletoe. You want to be using a waterproof pen for this. And again, I'm using the Micron pen here. This is the O3 size. They have a bunch of different sizes. And this is completely waterproof and it's also archival. And you can use this for cards and really anything where you want pen detail with your watercolor because it won't smear and smudge. There's something really special about a handmade card. It's personal and thoughtful, and it shows that you've put time and care into the card that you're presenting to someone. And these are not only easy to make, but they add that extra handmade touch to your holiday greetings. So I'm sure that your family, friends, and loved ones will really appreciate this. And if you create it in a size like this, I'm doing a five by five with about a one inch border. You can write on the back of it for the card or even use it as a gift tag. And then the recipient can keep this as a piece of art, which is really beautiful. So it doubles as both a card and a tag, and then also a piece of art for the person that you are giving the gift to. As always, don't worry too much about perfection here. These cards are meant to feel handmade and organic. The imperfections add to the charm. And these are a great way to practice with watercolor, especially if you're new to the medium, because these designs are simple and they're forgiving. You can be as precise or imprecise with these as you want to be. If you want to keep your paint within the lines, you can do that. If it goes slightly outside the lines, you can do that as well. You'll see me fluctuate between both of those styles, depending on the card that I'm working on. Right here, I'm doing more of a monochromatic look on that center present. And then I mix up the colors a little bit with the two side gifts. And since these designs are relatively simple, I decided to add some paint splatters to each one. 
And you can do that a couple different ways. Uh, so early on in the video, I was tapping the brush in my right hand, which is my painting hand. I was tapping that brush onto a brush that I was holding in my left hand so that paint from the right brush would splatter off onto the paper. And then through the rest of the video, I'm doing what I'm doing here, which is holding the brush in my right hand and then tapping the middle of it with my left hand index finger. Now we're going to create a Christmas tree. And I was inspired by the, the spindly little Christmas tree from Snoopy. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's the Peanuts Christmas and it's so cute. You know, they go out looking for a Christmas tree and a lot of them look really full and perfect. And then they ultimately end up taking pity on this little tree. <laughs> it's like so cute and I think just has three branches on it. And it's just the sweetest little thing. So this tree has a few more branches, but was basically inspired by that. I'm adding some little ornaments here. We'll make those all different colors when we color them in. If you're unsure about any of your placement when you're going through these designs initially, like when you draw the star, or if you want to draw the layout of the branches and be sure of where you're placing them, just draw this in pencil first. And then once you're happy with your design, you can go back over it with the pen. And once the pen is dry, erase any stray pencil marks and then get out your paints. So right here, I'm going through and placing down all the green. And you may want to use a dryer or let your paints air dry in between each of the colors so that the colors aren't running together, especially when you bring in lighter colors like the yellow and fill out those Christmas ornaments, give it a little splatter, and then we'll go on to this design, which is three Christmas bulbs, three ornaments, and we're gonna put little ties on each one and then make them all slightly different colors. On this one, I'm starting with the darker color along the left side of the ornament and then washing a lot of the pigment off of the brush and coming back in with mostly water to fill out that right side section. And you can see that the that starts to pull some of the darker pigment from the left side over to the right side and creates a really nice rounded effect on the ornament. Then I'm coloring in those ties with a little bit of pigment and we'll do a little splatter when you're doing the splatter effect, make sure that you've got a decent amount of water or wet watery pigment on your brush, and then just hold it firm and tap the middle part of that brush. You don't want to accidentally tap it so hard that you tap your brush into the painting, which I did do on one of these paintings and edited it out. So learn from my, my mistake and don't get too enthusiastic with your tapping. Okay, now we are on to our second holly berry design, and this one is more of an elongated sprig of holly. I'm adding some center lines to those leaves, and then little clusters of the holly berries at the center there. Now for this one, I'm mixing up the green a little bit. I want it to be a little bit darker on one side of the leaf, and then a little bit lighter on the other side. So if you are color mixing right along with me, you can mix up some cooler and some warmer tones, and that'll help give some additional interest to the design that you're creating. Designs like this are also great for practice with watercolor because you don't have to be super precise with the colors and the color mixes that you're using. You can use these as an opportunity to experiment with your palette it's also a great way to use break in a new palette and see how these colors come out on paper, both when they're wet and when they're dry. Going around and darkening some of the leaves a little bit. One of the best things that you can do for yourself when you're painting with watercolor is to be sure that you're using 100% cotton paper and it's so much more absorbent and lets you work with the color a lot more and you can work the paper a bit more without it starting to come apart uh, the way that cellulose and wood pulp based papers will do. 
I would even go so far to say that the paper that you use is even more important than the quality of the watercolor paint that you're using. So prioritize your paper, the quality of your paper first. It will make your life a lot easier, especially if you're a beginner with watercolor and you're getting used to how it acts, you'll find that it's much easier to use on 100% cotton paper. Okay, we're continuing with our wreath here. This one's a little bit more narrow than the one that we did initially. And as you go through this video with me, you'll notice that I'm taking you through two variations of each design. So this is our second wreath that we're working on. And this one also has holly berries scattered throughout it. This one is so cute. And again, vary the different greens that you're using as you work through your leaves and foliage. Okay, this is our second bundle of mistletoe, and I thought it would be fun to draw this really narrow ribbon, and we're going to make that an indigo blue. There are such classic colors associated with Christmas. Of course, there's the red and the green. If you happen to have metallic paints or pens even, that would be stunning for adding embellishments to these cards. And the indigo blue, I always think of with in connection with snow, and it just looks so beautiful and rich. So we're going to mix up a really beautiful jewel tone here and then put that into the bow. As you're drawing these designs, if you make the shapes a little bit larger, you'll have an easier time getting into them with the brush. Or if you make them quite a bit smaller, just be sure to use a narrower, smaller, smaller brush. The one that I'm using right here is a zero round brush. This one is by Princeton. It's one of their Princeton snap brushes. I really love this. It keeps its shape really well and does what it says. It just snaps right back into place as you use it. So it's not one that you need to reform anytime you wash it. It is just ready to go. Okay, we finished all of our leaves here. So let's mix up some bright red for those little holly berries sprinkled in there. This one turned out really cute. We'll do a little bit of a splatter. The smaller the brush that you use for the splatter, the smaller the dots will be. And if you want to have a mix of both large and small dots, just use a small brush for some of them and a slightly larger brush for larger dots. Now we'll do some more packages. These will be as if you're looking from a top-down view at these, and we'll get them painted all different colors. I've kept the ribbons really simple here, so all you need to draw are two loops for the bow and then two little tails off of that ribbon. Use whatever colors you like here. On some of these, I'm making the package one solid color, and then on other ones, I'm varying it just a little bit. If you're enjoying this project, let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you. And I also love hearing what other ideas you might like to see on this channel. I've been focused more on landscapes recently, but projects like this are always a lot of fun to share with you, especially when they're seasonal like this. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps support the channel and lets me know that you want more content like this. You'll find that these designs are really customizable. You can play around with different colors, different layouts, and even add your own little doodles if you want to have more embellishments on the card. If you're someone who likes adding a personal touch to your gifts, these handmade cards are a simple and really meaningful way to do that. It's also a great way to unwind and start getting into the holiday spirit. It's a little pocket of calm during a busy season. I would love to see your creations. If you give these a try, feel free to share your cards in the comments or let me know which of the designs you liked the best and which ones you recreated. I hope these give you inspiration to create your own holiday cards and cards for Christmas. It's such a fun and creative way to spread some holiday cheer. For this one, we're going to create a tree. So you'll do a simple triangle shape 
and then create some downward facing diagonal lines and then add in some circles. Some of them can be on the sides of the tree outside of the border and vary the sizes a bit, large and small. On some of these designs, you'll see me placing the splatter down first. And then off screen, I've dried that and then I come back in with the broader strokes of color through the bigger shapes. You can do whichever works best for you. I switched it up on a few of these because I wanted the splatter to be under the main subject of the painting. So in this case, the tree, as opposed to having splatter on top of the tree. I'm darkening some of those greens a little bit and then we're going to go through and fill in those ornaments. So use whatever colors strike your fancy. I'm going to focus on some reds and some yellows. Those will contrast really nicely with the green and they'll really pop and be really vibrant. Once you finish your cards, just remove the tape from those borders and then go through all the ones that you made. You'll have some beautiful ones like this. Thanks so much for being here. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you again soon.